Hello, hello, guys. How's it going? This is John Bartholomew, and this is another live stream. How's it going, Gorby? Henry Yu, RPG, Belgian novice. The day has come. It is the rapid match against Grandmaster Krikor, Mechatarian. Four game rapid match, 15 plus two time control, 15 minutes of the two second increment. If we're still locking horns, 2 2, after the four games, we're going to have a blitz tie break. I think we're going to do an Armageddon game so it can get over as soon as possible after four games of Rapid. <laughs> so buckle up. This should be fun. It should be informative, educational, and just uh, a real blast. I've been looking forward to playing Krikor. I don't know a whole lot about him, i got to be honest. I've seen him on Chess.com. I've seen him on Twitch. He's 25, 45 Fide, so clearly a very good player. I think he's even been close to 2,600 Fide before. So... Let's see what happens in this match. How's everyone doing? Thanks for tuning in. How's it going, Sharara? Maze in Blue? Baron Banana? Herbal Minimalist? Yanov KZ? Megt? Long Grief? Aaron Gobra? Chess Bay? Thanks to Chris for subscribing, by the way. He subscribed right before the stream started. And Lovely Bean. Thank you, Lovely Bean. Lovely Bean cheered 500 bits. Team Scandi. All right. Maybe there will be a Scandi today. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of preparation for this match. It's been busy for one thing. Uh, also, I saw just in browsing Krikor's games like real quickly, he plays a lot of stuff. So like with White, he was playing E4, D4, Knight F3, C4 in tournament games. So, you know, when you see that, there's only so much preparation you can reasonably do, especially for a fun online match. So I'm just going into this with an open mind and I'm going to do my best. Sounds good, Cash Your Dreams. We're going to start here momentarily. I'm talking to Krikor. Uh, oh, by the way, before we, we get going, we we got we to gotta show this, guys. This was created by none other than, well, you know who he is. If you don't know who Dan, a.k.a. Anton Squared, is by now, uh, where have you been living? <laughs> so he posted this on Twitter in response to my announcement about this match. So... Yeah, you, you guys know I just got a haircut. Uh, there's been a lot of talk recently about, about my hair in particular. So, you know, thank you, Dan, for creating this. I think it's a work of art. Um, the only improvement I think that could have been made instead of L'Oreal, I think it should have been Maybelline, per my comment on Twitter. I was saying maybe he's born with it. So, well done, Dan. <laughs> All right, I'm talking to Grandmaster Creekcore. He says he's adjusting his new webcam, but we're going to get started here in a second. <laughs> you guys like the, the long-haired look? <laughs> I'm not that ambitious. I don't, I don't know if I could uh, reasonably pull off long hair like that. Hey, Chessy Bus. Thanks, Robo. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame you uh, going with L'Oreal. Because you're worth it, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah, I have this match today. This will be a lot of fun. And next Thursday, I'll be playing another match, another dual commentary match. Oh, and I should mention, this is a dual commentary match. So, if you'd like to, you can use the multi-stream feature on Twitch to watch both my stream and Krikor's stream at the same time, if you wanted to do that. Um, I don't know if Chess Bay's here, but she knows how to do that, and yeah, she's a big proponent of that. Um, so that's possible, or you can just watch one or the other. I'll be uploading this to YouTube afterwards. Krikor is usually streaming in uh, Portuguese. He's usually giving Portuguese commentary, and he has quite the following, especially among his Brazilian followers, but he has graciously agreed to do English commentary today. So if you want to get both perspectives in English... You can do that, because I certainly don't know how to speak Portuguese. So thank you, Grandmaster Krikor. I should say Grandmaster Mechatarian, but... <laughs> yeah, he's from Brazil. Yep. Oh, and thank you, Music Amol, for the 100 bits. Appreciate that. Henry Yu for the 100 bits as well. Oh, and Chess Bay too. I missed that completely. 
Um, thanks, Chess Bay. Thousand bits. Appreciate it. Glad you like the haircut. Uh, and Belgian Novice subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thanks, Belgian Novice. Yeah, Tom Haas is right. Krikor lives in Brazil. I think one or both of, maybe both of his parents are of our Armenian descent, which is probably a good thing in the chess world. You know, Armenia is a chess powerhouse. So if you've got some Armenian blood in you, I think already you can expect your rating. You can like tack on two or 300 points at birth, <laughs> your expected rating. Mr. Doug Wright, tiered 100 bits, says nice haircut. Thanks, Mr. Doug Wright, appreciate it. Yeah, I went, I went short here. What's my heritage? I'm like a Western European mutt, you know. Um, English, Irish, Scottish, German, Norwegian, French. Those are the major ones. All right. I think we're going to be starting any second here for reels this time. Oh, glad to hear that, the Climbing the Rating Ladder videos. I'm going to keep making those. I think those are helpful, and I'm really glad you like them, Music Amol. <laughs> Jesse Puss. That's right. Ah, thanks, HS Petrushka. He says he's Brazilian, but he's cheering for me today. Well, I certainly wouldn't fault you for cheering for Krikor, but I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, there's some Bartholomews that are famous cartographers. Scottish cartographers. I want to do that 23andMe thing sometime. Because I'm very curious what the breakdown is. Thank you. Appreciate all the cheers. Match next week is against Simon Williams. Oh yeah, I was in the process of explaining that. But uh, yeah, I'll be playing the Ginger GM himself, Simon Williams. It'll be on Thursday. Uh, we're still working out the time, but I think it'll be a little bit later than this match. So probably like two o'clock PM central ish, but I'll keep you guys posted on that. Uh, don't know the format for one, that one yet, but playing Simon is always a blast, no matter what the speed and Charlotte chess center. My buddies at the Charlotte chess center cheered a hundred bits. Thanks guys. Appreciate that. Hope you're doing well out in Charlotte. Hey, BGH. Yeah, and as Chespay just put in the chat there, that's how you can use the multi-stream feature on Twitch if you want to watch both streams simultaneously. Uday, I'm great. I'm feeling good. It's Friday. Getting ready for the weekend. I know. I know, BGH. The emotes will come. They will come in time. All right. I think we are ready here. So... Let's get the challenge going. I'm just telling Krikor that he's not open to challenges right now. <laughs> I just tried to challenge him and it said he's not accepting them. So I'm going to wait for him to challenge me. He probably gets so many requests when he's streaming on Twitch, like people want to play him. So some streamers turn that off temporarily. Good luck in your tournament tomorrow, I owned. I'll try for some tactics today, for sure. <laughs> okay. So 15-2 is going to be the time control. The challenge is off. Here we go. I don't know if I'm going to be white or black in the first game. We will find out. It's going to be equal number whites and blacks. It's a four-game match. Okay. So let's start out with my usual here. I'll play d4. He plays knight f6. Okay. I'm just going to play knight f3. Playing a match is, is such a different uh, style than playing in a tournament. 
where you play one game, like a Swiss tournament, play one game against someone, and then go on. Because you actually have time in a match to feel out the opponent, you know, get a taste for what openings they play, and adjust accordingly. So he plays g6. I'm going to play the Tori. I've been playing this so much. If he if he did any preparation for this match, this is not going to be a surprise. But then again, this is a system, when white plays it, I don't really think that black can uh, effectively like prepare an antidote to it. It's kind of just a system you play, much like the London, and just get a position and go with it. So I'll try to give as much commentary as possible. You know, this is um, a casual match. It's for fun, but... You know, I want to win too, as I'm sure Krikor does. So I can't go overboard on the commentary, but I'll try to provide as many useful talking points as possible. Okay, so he plays d6. I played bishop c4 here before, and I think I'm going to do it again. I've seen Magnus Carlsen play this move too. It looks a little weird to place it on this particular square, because usually it goes to d3. But I think there's some merit to it. And he plays c5. Huh, okay. C5. Thanks for the subscription, Malloway. Yeah. So I could take, but after take, I would rather have my pawn on E4 rather than E3. So I'm thinking about just C3 or just castling one of the two. Leaning a bit towards castling. I mean, either move could be played, but... No, let's play c3. Then if d5, I think I'm just more apt to play bishop d3, just drop it back. I did have a game against Grandmaster Christian Carrilla in this line. I think he reached this exact position uh, in St. Louis a few months ago. And I didn't really get an advantage out of the opening in that game. But let's see if it goes down similar lines or not. Oh, wow. So we're playing a rated game. Looks like my rapid rating is a lot higher than Grandmaster Mechatarians. <laughs> well, that's okay. We play for the love of the game, not rating points, right? McBeard, thanks for the cheers. 10 bits. Okay, he plays Knight C6. I'm just going to castle. So what Carilla did in the game is he traded on d4, and then he played a quick e5. And I think the game was roughly level after he did that. Um, maybe there's some way white can press there, but I think objectively that's what black should do in this position. But he plays b6. Okay, so he's choosing a more flexible option. I'm thinking about queen e2, standard move. Could also play h3 if I want to preserve the bishop. Like h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, knight h5, I can drop back to g, uh, h2 always. I'm going to start with queen e2 though. And Terrara, cheered 100 bits, says, As a Portuguese speaker, I'm rooting for you. Good luck. Thanks, Terrara. Yeah, he plays bishop b7. Now, I have the option of trading the light square bishops if I want with bishop a6. But he'll play queen c8. I don't really see what I've achieved with that. So let's just play h3. Again, so my bishop always has a safe route here. The Hikaru Sportsmanship Award. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, so utterly normal position. We both burned a little time getting here. I'm curious if he'll play a6 or not, because usually a6 is played in these types of setups. 
just to control the b5 square, maybe threaten to advance b5 at some point, rules out bishop a6. The downside is he'd have to stay guarding that pawn. So he plays h6, okay. Yeah, I don't think I derive any benefit from bishop f4 here, so I'll go bishop h4 as planned. Uh, yeah, Yanov KZ, I forgot to add in the uh, notation. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I will do that after this game. I don't want to go out mid-game for fear of losing this one. Um, if it just automatically forfeits or something. But remind me, and I'll fix that next game. Hopefully I'll remember, but please remind me if I don't. Hot Dog Fallacy donated $5. Says, good luck, John. Thanks, Hot Dog Fallacy. So one thing I wanted to mention, too, while I have a brief bit of downtime here, um, I know for the purists who like have watched my YouTube vid videos for a long time and have seen me do these dual commentary matches, uh, you may not like the you know constant looking at the chat and looking at who's donated and stuff that happens on Twitch. And that's why I'm going to continue to make YouTube-only content. Uh, for instance, I did a Climbing the Rating Ladder video where I didn't stream it on Twitch or anything. Like, it's still important to me that I do that uh, because you know I play my best chess when I'm fully focusing on the game. And it's, it's a lot to do commentary, try to play well, and look at the Twitch chat and donations and whatnot. So, you know, I fully understand if um, some of you are not happy that I cannot focus completely while doing all of that. I understand, but it's just kind of the medium of Twitch. And I think the trade-off, just having like a fantastic community, really, of you guys on here and how much you guys enjoy following these matches and the fact that it's largely for fun, I think that outweighs it, but... Just know that I am going to continue making um, high-quality, strictly chess content, let's say. Okay, plays rook c8. So now if I play bishop a6, you know, probably play queen c7. Rook c8 is useful in a lot of cases. I start to think about crawling forward on the queen side too, so a3 followed by b4 is definitely a typical plan in these setups. Could start with a rook move too, like rook fd1. Don't think I want to play e4 yet. I'm a little worried about like knight h5 ideas if I do that. I could think about d5 too soon, but knight a5 looks like a good counter against that, so I'm actually pretty tempted by a3. Looks like a nice flexible move. Yeah, I'm going to play a3. Because this just helps me with a lot of different plans. If I do want to play e4, and there's a trade of pawns here, I don't have to worry about knight b4. Also, if he ever harasses my bishop, I can drop it back to a2, no problem. Keep it on this long diagonal leading towards this king. Uh, I can look for b4 later if I want to attack his c5 pawn that way. There's many things that this enables. Will I ever stream on Instagram? Um, I think that's a no. <laughs> I don't even know if there's a streaming feature on it. I'm not on Instagram, so. I might open up an Instagram, but I don't think I'll be streaming on there. Thanks, Zoken. Glad you liked the videos. Okay, he plays queen c7. Stop the presses. I am up on time. I'm ahead a minute and a half on the clock. Thanks for the bits, McBeard. Yeah, queen c7 is very flexible. Kind of tempted to play bishop g3 now and just take aim against his queen. Don't know that my bishop is really doing as much on this diagonal anymore when his queen isn't there. So maybe in anticipation of... Uh, playing e4 and being able to meet like knight h5 with bishop h2. I could think about that, although d4 gets weak in that case. Could also just bring a rook to the center. Hmm. 
Like Rook FD1, I think, is is just always a helpful move here as well. Don't think I want to commit to B4 yet. I'm just not sure if that's going to fit in with my plans. Now I'm going to go Bishop G3. I want to keep a little bit more of an eye on the E5 square if he decides to play Pawn E5. Long Reeve, you can always watch this on YouTube later. I'll upload this after the fact. Pots are to master. I bet this match will be about two hours. So these are 15-minute games. So, yeah, two hours is a good estimate. Maybe two and a half. And incidentally, this is the same time control used in the Pro Chess League, 15 plus 2. I just kind of got used to playing it in the Pro Chess League, so um, I asked Krikor if he wanted to play with this time control, and he, he immediately agreed to that. The time scrambles do get pretty wild with this time control. You know, even, even though you do have that two-second increment, like, if you guys watch the Pro Chess League this year, there's so many blunders that happen in the last few seconds. It's unbelievable. People missing... Free queens, maiden one, very common. And he does go for e5. Okay. Yeah. So I think I should take against this. So let's start with this. And assuming he takes with the pawn, I like he takes with the knight. I thought he would take with the pawn. Hmm. Because now I don't necessarily have to take his knight. I could play bishop a6 here. Because maybe this d, d pawn's a little bit of a weakness. Otherwise, take, take. You know, I'd like to attack e5 a bit better, but I feel like he always has knight h5 at the minimum. So I'm kind of thinking I should go here now. He could take on f3. I take back with my knight. Maybe knight e4. Um, yeah, always my bishop can come back to h2. I could also take and then play bishop a6. But why open the file if I don't have to? Yeah, I'm going to play bishop a6 right away. Because I think his bishop is stronger than mine now. I don't see much sense like retreating it here. Eventually he wants to play d5. So let's just get rid of this guy. And I'm going to try to put more pressure on these two points in the coming moves. <laughs> yeah. If we're going strictly by these these rapid ratings on chess.com, Art Dapples, you're right. <laughs> or I didn't check your math, but... <laughs> that seems a little high to me, 99% chance. No, but I think the real chance for me in this match, I mean, he outrates me by, what, how many points? I'm like 2470 right now. So he's got a good 70, 75 points on me. I think he's 25, 45 feet A. So, you know, tough customer. Um, somehow I have done well in these dual commentary matches. Like, I have a very good track record with these. But I don't think that really matters that much, especially when you're playing a new opponent. But I think I have a, a good chance. I mean, I would definitely not say I'm the favorite, but I think um, I have quite a good chance in this match. Okay, he plays rook e8. So swap the bishops first or no? I'm thinking not. This move speaks to me. Um, also just here. I mean, it's kind of a question which rook. Uh, maybe I should use the a rook. A rook might be a little more accurate. Don't think I want to trade yet. Yeah, I want to keep the tension. 
for a couple more moves. I mean, I'm briefly considering like take on b7, queen takes, knight takes e5, d takes e5, then knight c4, looking at knight d6 and also the capture on e5, but he always says knight e4. Knight e4 is a good resource at the end of those lines. So let's let's do this. Have I played Krikor in a tournament? No, I have not, man from Utrecht. I don't even think I've been at the same tournament as Krikor in the past. So, yeah, he lives in Brazil. I've never played a tournament in Brazil. I don't think I've ever seen him in American tournaments. Seems like a really cool guy, though. Jimmy Buckets donated $1. Says $1. Thanks, Jimmy Buckets. Yeah, the Timberwolves are going to need some help tonight. They really are. we got our work cut out for us. Down 2-0 to the Rockets, just getting massacred every game. Cannot stop James Harden. We're probably going to get swept. <laughs> Wouldn't be a huge shock. How do I know Krikor? I just know him because we're both streamers on chess.com. I've tuned into his stream a couple times. And I got some comments on my videos saying you should do a dual commentary against Krikor. So I went and checked him out and... Um, I actually just, he was doing a stream when I, when I went over to his channel at one point, this is like a couple months ago and I just introduced myself and said, Hey, you want to do a dual commentary? And he said, yeah, right there on stream. So then we just talked from there. Thanks for the 1500 bits, McBeard. Okay. So he has five minutes and 30 seconds left. I mean, I like my position. It, it feels like I have a bit of pressure here. I don't think it's very much, but okay. He takes... Taking with the pawn controls the e4 square, but it's a very ugly move. I don't think I'm going to play that. So let's let's do this. And I would suspect he's going to go here. And then, so on knight e4, if I take on b7... With the idea queen takes b7, bishop takes d6. He has the intermezzo knight takes g3 hitting my queen. Although, admittedly, I could just take back and then take on d6. And I would be up a pawn. It's not a very healthy pawn, but it is an extra pawn. Hmm. I will consider that line. It's probably got pretty good compensation there, but yeah, I'm going to think about it. So he takes on a6 first. All right. Yeah, so he's probably just trying to disallow that altogether. I think now he's going to play knight e4. Yep, he does. Okay, so my plan, I think, here is just bishop h2, knight d2. Try to swap that knight. I could also go to f4 with this bishop and maybe try to bait him into g5. Hmm. Not sure that's something I should really burn time thinking about, though. Yeah, I'm just going to play bishop h2. Let's be practical with the time management. Now, the only possibly annoying thing here is if he gets in d5. I don't want him to achieve d5 somehow. So, hmm, maybe he can try, though. He can try queen c6, I'm just noticing. Because I can't take on a7 because he has rook a8 trapping my queen. Yeah, and queen c6 would make a lot of sense, just stepping off the same diagonal as this bishop. So that that's a definite possibility for him. I can still play knight d2 there, but then d5, knight takes e4, probably rook takes e4. Ah, but can no, I still can't take, even in that case. I still can't take on a7. Oh, no, I can. I can, because c7 would be available. Ah, okay, that's the subtlety. So I'm thinking queen c6, knight d2. I can He can take on d2 first, but all right. If he plays queen c6, as soon as he goes d5, like then this actually will be in play because rook a8, queen c7, and my bishop will be helping to guard that square. So I won't have my queen trapped. And he's got three and a half minutes. He has to think about all that. I'm liking my position right now. 
Hey, Matt Croset, glad you could make it. So I've been playing some real methodical strategic chess here. I mean, I still don't think this is a, a huge advantage, but it's it's a comfortable position. It's a nice position to play. Uh, I'm sure Magnus would love this position for white, <laughs> and he would know exactly what to do. And I like the time situation, because I think my moves are just much easier than his. So hopefully I can continue compounding the time advantage here. Hey, Raj. Uh, GM Jojo, I don't think I had to double my F-pawns because I had my queen on E2 and my other knight protecting F3. So even if he took twice, I, I wouldn't have to double my pawns. We're up to 373 viewers. Thank you, guys. This is the first game of the match. I didn't put a score ticker, but the score will appear uh, on the side here. Okay, he plays bishop e5. Interesting. Yeah, so I think he was sensing the problems he's having on that diagonal and with the d6 pawn. So he's willing to trade his dark square bishop. Now I slightly wish I had my bishop on h4. Well, even then, I'm not sure. But Okay, so taking with the knight is obvious. Like, taking with the knight is the default move here. I just want to figure out my follow-up. Because usually you want to keep your bishop in this situation. I open the file, so like knight takes e5, d takes e5, rook d5 sort of suggests itself. Um, you know, he has a couple tactical issues there too, if that happens. Because if like rook c d8, I have bishop takes e5. No, I don't have bishop takes e5, never mind. That's nonsense. <laughs> I'll probably play rook d1 first. Hmm. You can also think about stuff like knight takes e5, d takes e5, queen a4. I don't think I'm going to take with the bishop here. Yeah, there's no reason. So I'm only considering one move, and when that happens, you should just play the move you're considering. Okay. And rook d5, I think, is still my top candidate move here. Makes a lot of sense. Just pressures... Pressures the e-pawn, kind of limits his options. Can he try to do anything sneaky, like try to go c4 and trap my queen? Nah, that's not working out. All right, let's do this. And again, try to maintain that time advantage. I'm willing to play moves that objectively are not even the best, but still keep a slight edge in the interest of um, staying ahead on the clock. So he does play rook d8. Now I think just double is going to be my my reaction here. Just briefly thinking about something else, like bringing the queen back. But now doubling doubling makes way more sense. Let's just do it. Pre-move that. By the way, I do not like that on chess.com the pre-move covers up a piece that's on the board. Like if you're pre-moving a capture, recapture, I don't like that. I think it should just be an arrow like they do on other servers like Lee Chess. Okay, so here, very important, rook d8, bishop takes e5. So he can't, he can't contest the file. I do have to be careful if his queen and his knight kind of get in, but okay, he, he backs off with his knight. I like to see that. Hmm. No tactics working. Gonna move the rook, just deciding between these three squares. I mean, rook d1 might be the most appropriate here. 
Because Rook D2, I think he's going to play Knight back to E4. Hit the Rook with Tempo. Uh, Rook D3, for some reason, I don't like the position of the Rook there. It kind of blocks my Queen's retreat. So yeah, let's go back to D1. Because now, if Rook D8, I can trade. And I take, and my Queen can come back to F1 if he checks. I always have that resource. He goes Rook E7. Okay. Yeah, that's a good move. He's getting ready to contest the file. Hmm. Now, how to increase the pressure here? Queen d3 is a move I'd like to play, but he simply plays rook d7 in reply. Maybe queen all the way back to e2, looking for queen f3, but it feels feels kind of vague. a4, a5 I'm thinking about. Could go queen c4, maybe with an eye towards playing b4. That might be a decent plan. Let's do that. I don't think Queen was really doing anything on A6 anymore. Okay, so under a minute and a half for the for him. Three minutes for me. Yeah, I'm not super happy about the bishop here, but I don't think it's that bad. If I put it on G3, he can play Knight H5, so... It's fine on h2. I mean, g4 is a move I should probably consider in some circumstances, give my king a little bit more breathing room. He can play rook d7 here, but I, I think I can just take it and stand better. Because he has trouble taking with the queen. He always has to take with the knight, and then I get some squares for my queen, like queen d5. Plays queen c6. Okay, there's a check on d8. May not do much, though. Well, I could check on d8 and then play queen d3. That's something. Could also play a4 or... Yeah, somehow probe with the pawns. B4, he might go queen a4, I'm thinking. Although, admittedly, then I can check, but got some weaknesses. A4 feels like the correct move to me here. Yeah, I'm going to go a4. Throw the ball back at his court. A lot of maneuvering in this game, guys. Plays rook there pretty quick. I'm going to take that, take with the knight. Now, how to squeeze from here? It's tough because there's limited material, but there's still some possibilities, like maybe queen here. Could also play queen a6. Yeah, let's go queen a6. I'm going to put the queen back here to probe again. Can't lose complete sight of my back rank, but if he plays something like this, I can play bishop here and then have an escape route for the bishop. And I think the queen kind of threatening to come down here. Yeah, he. He plays a defensive defensive move. Okay, time is going to be a big factor coming up here. Let's 
Let's go G4. Continue squeezing. And this could weaken me in some cases, but I like the fact that on bishop g3, I kind of have more options in the future. Okay. Go here. Queen d7. Hmm. You really don't want to trade queens. <laughs> yeah, let's keep the queens on the board. I know, guys, like me not trading queens, what is what is going on? So bishop takes e5, he has queen e6. I don't like that pin. Let's go king g2. Just improve a little bit. Time, time. Time scramble. Try to get at this weakness. We'll take that. Hmm. Big time pressure for both. Kind of have to trade that. This is interesting. He's going to get at that pawn. Now it's sort of a standoff. I'm going to try to bring my king up. Okay, let's go here. Really got to hurry. No time. Okay. This knight is kind of cut off from home. Let's cut him off further. He's trying to find a way out. I don't want to give him a way out. Ooh, but he dropped that pawn. Okay, now I should be winning. Gonna have to give ground. Advance. And this is coming, followed by a check on h6. Oh, that's clever. <laughs> check. Unfortunately, he has a square to go to. That was a clever stalemate trick by Krikor at the end. Did you guys see that? That's like the mark of a, a savvy player, right? Knight g7. I mean, if I had two seconds on my clock, I might have taken. And whoops, stalemate. Nowhere for the king to go. Okay, that was a fun one. I like that game a lot. Um, yeah, let me add the notation in. Settings, uh, board and pieces, 
coordinates, inside board, save. Okay. I'm just gonna tell him I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. Yeah, that was a fascinating game though. I'll be right back guys. All right. So the coordinates are displaying properly. I'm just going to tell Creek I'm ready whenever he is. There's not going to be really any downtime in between these games other than, you know, maybe uh, a bathroom break or something. So I will have black in the next game. But yeah, this one was real fascinating. I... I know it didn't look that way on, on the the surface, but when we got in time pressure in this bishop versus knight end game, there were a lot of nuances here. You know, this situation, for instance, with his knight defending both pawns, this is a, a standoff. I mean, my bishop's attacking, his knight's defending, but I think the key difference is I can go after his e4 pawn. His king is not as active as mine, mainly thanks to my pawn on f5. It's restricting his king and preventing him from ever playing f5 himself. So, you know, I can try to do this. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Consulted a hidden engine in the bathroom. So, yeah, I think I have good winning chances in this endgame. He did drop the h6 pawn. I wonder what would have happened if he hadn't dropped the h6 pawn. But his knight had some trouble getting out. And he was kind of moving it around uh, desperately here, trying to find a way for it to escape. That's why I played bishop e1, cutting off knight f2. Okay, let me rematch him. He says he's ready. And here we go. Okay, game two. Opens with knight f3. Knight f3. Okay, let's play d5. I'll play my usual stuff. <laughs> this is a chess shirt, I will have you guys know. It's my, bro my uh, buddy Robbie Adamson's chess camp that I teach at every year, the Western Invitational Chess Camp. Nicholas is 1-0 me. I won the first game. And Krikor is thinking on move 2. I wonder if he's having some technical problems, because usually GM's not going to think much on move 2 in a standard opening like this. Okay, I like this variation for black. Definitely do not mind playing it. Knight d7 trying to go e5. Expand in the center. Yeah, that is the camp with Danny. He teaches there a lot, too. I think he's been the longest instructor, uh, longest teaching instructor there. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great, Sharik. I mean, I'm streaming chess on a Friday. Like, can life get any better? <laughs> you quit your job to watch. <laughs> yeah, I'm keeping it real casual. You guys probably saw I'm, I'm wearing some, like, baggy, baggy, not sweatpants. I don't know what you call these, like, windbreaker-type pants. We play C4. Okay, getting C4. What do I do here? There's some correct way not to refute this, but to meet this. It often involves taking the knight, but I don't think... You don't want to take the knight right here. So c6 or e6? Probably e6.
Hmm. I have not reviewed this line for a long time. Because c6, I'm just a little leery of. It can run into some problems with queen b3. But admittedly, I don't see anything wrong with c6 here. Like, why would that be a bad move? It looks fine. If he takes, takes, queen b3, I can play queen c7. Uh, knight c3 might be a little pressure there. Can also take the pawn. And then go for a setup with e5. Hmm. Okay. I think I'm going to play e6. I don't want to burn too much time here. I did well in the last game just tr staying ahead on the clock as much as possible. So let's attempt to do the same in this game. This bishop is undefended, so you know you constantly have to look at queen a4 stuff, but it, it doesn't come with check. So, okay, so he castles. Hmm. Just develop. Usually white's going for d3, e4, some plan like that later on. Once this asymmetrical capture has been made, he's got a, a majority in the center. He wants to activate it at some point. Thanks, Distant Fire. Hello to you. <laughs> How's it going, Bentikers? Okay, queen b3. Yeah, knight c5 is going to be the reaction here most of the time. Don't think I should belabor that decision. So again, queen a4, not possible because my knight defends that square, but I just want to keep an eye on that bishop, even though it is defended by the knight on f6 now. Whoops. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't pre-move bishop d7. <laughs> I've had some bad luck with pre-moves. If you saw, not this last title Tuesday, but the one before that, I think it was that one. There was a game where I was like, I had the option of castling kingside or queenside. And no, no, it was the Lee Chess titled arena. That's where it was. It was a one minute game. And I was like motioning towards castling queenside. And then I tried to click off my king. And then I was thinking about castling kingside. And I clicked the G1 square. Because I had clicked my king already, it, it just castled me kingside. And I got a, a losing position. Although I somehow won the game. Okay, queen e3. I'm just trying to figure out what his idea is here. I mean, bishop e7 is obvious. I could block with the queen, but that feels kind of lame. No, okay, bishop e7 is fine. And Benktelman subscribed with Twitch Prime. Thank you. Uh, also, Henry Yu cheered 100 bits a little while ago. Says, please, John, no more moving with only 0. 0.3 seconds left. I know, I was cutting it close there on some instances in that last game. Uh, Gorby72993 cheered 100 bits. John, you were so close to flagging. Yep. Uh, Xaways cheered 100 bits. Thank you very much. Uh, Smarter Chess donated $5. Says, love this format, John. Thanks. Thanks, Smarter Chess. Uh, Chivo Cobra subscribed with Twitch Prime, too. And I think I'm caught up now. Older Sinho cheered 100 bits. My GF is really unhappy now that my second love is black making chess videos. Oh, <laughs> back making videos. Thank you, Older Sinho. Okay, so I don't quite get the point of this, this maneuver. Queen here, here. I know that sometimes happens in these openings where you delay the development of your E and your D pawns. Uh, in fact, I've seen some MVL games where he's done this on the white side, but a, a different line. I think in this case, I don't see why black should have anything to fear. Because I have good development. I have all my minor pieces out. I'm one move away from castling. He expands in the center. Okay. I bet he's going to put this queen back on this square. 
I think that's what he's going to do. So where do I want my knight? E6 or back to D7? Let's go back to D7. I'm going to stay solid. I'm not going to put it on E6 because I might want to retreat my bishop to E6. Let's say he plays knight E5. I think bishop F5 or bishop E6 are my likely replies. Does play knight E5. Which one? Bishop F5, can he play queen G5? Maybe. That looks kind of weird, though. Hmm. Bishop f5, queen here. And then do I have problems defending both of these? I don't think I want to take this knight. Because if I take, he takes with the pawn, I lose some time there. And I have problems with d5. So bishop f5, queen here. That's what I'm looking at. Yeah, it's kind of hard to defend. I don't really want to play knight b6. Okay, I think for that reason, I'm going to choose like kind of the passive looking square, but I, I feel my position solid and I'm ready to castle. So yeah, and now here I was thinking just rook uh, b8. Could also maybe take on e5. Perhaps premature. Yeah, let's just play rook b8. Is he going to go knight c3, c6, bishop f4? And therefore, should I play queen c8 so I can go c6? No, no, I think this is fine. Let's do this. Hey, mate in 47. Yep, see you, Potsdam Master. Enjoy the U.S. Championship. I've been following that, too. Excellent coverage on the St. Louis Chess Club channel, as always. Oh, that's good to know, Henry. Knight d3. These are some sophisticated maneuvers. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to use the f4 square. That is clear. And if I play c6, then he's going to play here with tempo on the rook. So, okay. I see your point, Krikor. Maybe now I play knight b6. Eh, knight c5 is kind of annoying. Hmm. Do I really have to fear knight f4? Like, what if castles knight f4, say, c5 in that position? That should be reasonable. I mean, I would like to keep my bishop pair if I could, but it's a little tricky logistically. I have to play some awkward moves to do it. So I'm just going to, I'm going to castle and say, you know what? If you want to play this move, go ahead. And I'm thinking about playing actively after that with c5. Core 4 achieved 100 bits. No, sorry, 500 bits. Thank you, Core 4, 1996. Okay, I'm a little behind on the clock. I'm like two minutes behind. So if he plays knight f4, I want to have my response prepared. And I think it's going to be c5. I think I'm going to try to open the position paradoxically. Oh no, can he take on d5 if I play that? Nah, because d4 is loose. So okay, I think on knight f4 I can play c5. Let's say knight f4, c5. 
knight takes e6, f takes e6. And I'm kind of banking on the fact that his d4 pawn is awkward to guard. If he takes, I can take with the knight with tempo. And he can retreat his queen, certainly. I also have the half-open f-file. Maybe there will be some pressure on f2. Reminds me of a terash if we get that sort of position. I've got uh, bishops that are placed as they are in a terash defense. Uh, core 4 still working on it. Can't tell you exactly. <laughs> Not sure. I'm working with the chess.com guys, though. I hope we'll have one or two at least very soon in the next week or two. No, I don't really listen to Indian music, Basid. So I think he has a slight dilemma about which which piece he wants to use on the f4 square. He could play something neutral. He could just play knight c3 here. He's maybe debating. Because the normal move I'd play in these structures would be pawn c6. But the fact that pawn c6 is always strongly met by bishop f4 with the temple on the rook and then queen takes b7 coming in, that's that's the reason why I'm looking more at c5 plans rather than c6 ideas. I do like dire straits. Okay, he's thinking on this move a lot. Two plus minutes move. Uh, two plus minutes now. trying to figure out what I'm going to do against knight c3 because on knight f4 I'm like 95% certain I'm going to play c5 but on knight c3 I'm still not sure what I'm going to do maybe still c5 honestly because I think it uh, is pretty good tactically idea being knight c3 c5 if he ever takes with the pawn I have d4 with tempo on the queen and then attacking the knight on c3 And if knight c3, c5, bishop f4, because I was saying the bishop can go there and attack the rook, I would have pawn c4, forking his queen and knight. Paul the Bard of Avon donated $5. Loving the stream, John. Thank you. Okay, so c5. Do I pull the trigger? I think it's a thematic and probably just good move. I mean, again, there's a lot of comparisons to the Tarash here. Yeah, I'm going for it. He took a long time to make that move. Maybe this will be a surprise to him. Let's try to act decisively. Because that's an issue. My bishop being aligned with his queen, if I ever get to push d4. So he can't take on c5. He can't play bishop f4. He might have to commit to knight takes d5. Or bishop takes d5, but they don't quite look like moves that are, are great for him. Although, I, I shouldn't say that. They might be the only thing to do. And There's some interesting possibilities. Let's say he takes with the knight. I can play bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5, and maybe knight b6 then. Hitting his bishop three times, because my queen is also joining in, and trying to uh, threaten c4. He does take with the knight. Okay. So now, he's threatening to take on e7 or f6 with check. So, I think taking the knight is appropriate here. Just almost seems like there should be a tactic here. If I take with the knight on d5, bishop takes d5, c4... Almost working, but he can take with the bishop. If he took with the queen, I had knight b6, but he can take with the bishop. Yeah, honestly, it almost feels like there's a tactic with bishop takes d5, bishop takes d5, knight b6. I mean, he could play bishop c4 there, but uh, I can at the very least just win my pawn back, maybe take on c4 first. 
yeah, that should be fine for me. Should be good. So I think I'm going to go with that unless I see something better. I could take on d4, but I, if I take on d4, I just I think he's going to take on e7, probably be somewhat better. Ah, can I play c4 first? Can I play c4 here? Ah, that might be the way to do it. c4, if he takes with the queen, then bishop takes, then knight b6. Uh-huh. And if c4, he takes here or here, uh, I can just recapture and he's forked. Oh, he has queen b4. He has queen b4. c4, knight takes e7, queen takes e7, queen b4. Oh, that feels unfair. <laughs> I can't believe queen b4 is working. Wait a second. Okay, I don't want to burn all my time on this move, but this, this is an important one. Yeah, I think that's holding for him, just barely, but it's it's holding, it's working. Might have to go with my original line. Bishop takes, followed by knight b6. Because if c4, yeah, knight takes, check. I gotta take it. I don't think king h8 is a legitimate move. King h8 crazy? <laughs> no, that's probably not right. Just again, like there's something, like my tactical vision is telling me something's up here. I don't see it though, if there is something. I'm at five minutes now. I mean, I can play king h8 as prophylaxis. Feels like it's going to let him off the hook, though. Yeah, I'm going to go with this line, guys. I'm not sure. And now knight b6, I think. Again, c4, he takes with the bishop. Yeah, okay. I mean, there's also knight f4 here. That crossed my mind. He could try this. But I can always take on d4. I could play g5, g5, I think would be the critical test. Monster says we're out here, 2,000 bits. Says, just joined the stream, looking forward to the match today. What's the time control? 15 plus 2. And I am under 5 minutes, so I really got to focus now. I'll be very curious about that moment when I go back and review these games after the match. I wonder if he's considering bishop takes f7 at all. I mean, he's getting some pawns. It's probably probably not good, though. I think I can defend. So I predict he plays knight f4 or bishop c4 here. But actually, bishop c4 might just be downright bad. Bishop c4, queen takes d4. Hitting the, the bishop again. And then... Uh, Bishop b5, I have c4. And then, finally, I think I am winning a piece in that line. <laughs> so maybe he'll speculate on knight f4. And then it'll be a tough decision whether I play g5 or not. I'm actually a little mistrustful of g5 the more I look at it. And I'm thinking perhaps I should just take on d4 instead if he does that. Uh, 
On knight f4, I'd like to play uh, knight f takes d5, knight takes d5, c4. But again, he always takes here with check. Oh, am I just hallucinating? Knight f4, I can just take it. I don't know why I thought knight f4 was a legitimate defense here. It is not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm looking over at the chat now. Um, again, guys, like I, I mentioned this on one of my previous streams, but no one has done this that I've seen today, but please do not put engine evals in the chat. Um, I'm not really looking at the chat for moves, but just do not post engine evals in particular. Yeah, I was just hallucinating that knight f4 was even possible here. There's only two defenders, but I have three attackers. Actually, he might be just be losing a piece here, guys, as per my original conclusion. <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have used all that time calculating that c4 line where he hit queen b4, but this could just be good for me. I mean, I see some lines where he can get maybe two pieces for the rook. Like, for instance, he could play bishop f4 here. It's possible. And then I take on d5. He takes on b8. He's going to take on f7. Okay. Yeah, he's going to go for this. So let's do that. Knight e5. I can play c4 here. I did see that move. But he takes on f7. Okay. That's his plan. Probably. Yeah, so this is like a two minor piece plus a couple pawns for the rook situation. Queen d5 or c4 here? Which one? Kind of thinking queen d5. That seems better. C4, I don't like giving him those, um, those pawns in the center. Whatever I do, though, I gotta make a decision soon. Mm, I don't know, though. So it might be awkward for him to defend the d4 pawn. Nah, I don't know. I'm going to go for queen d5. Got three minutes left. He's going to take... I don't think I should take his queen yet. Let's take with the king. So now d4 is under attack. So, you know, taking here is logical. Taking in, like, bishop f4. So he will have a rook and two pawns against my two minor pieces, but... I feel like my activity somewhat compensates. It remains to be seen. These next few moves will be critical how they play out. It's not so tactical anymore, but I gotta prevent his rooks from getting active. I gotta target some of his weaknesses, coordinate, all that good stuff. He takes. Let's take back. Expecting bishop f4. I think he's going to accept the double pawn so he can get the attack on my a7 pawn with his rook. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to take and play rook a8. I want the queens off the board now. And I like the idea of giving him static weaknesses. And then I think this knight can come back here. It's nice that these pawns can't do too much damage. And he's going to have a long way to go before activating those guys is my, my hope. And this is clearly a passive move, but it's not gonna my rook's not gonna be passive forever. Yeah, if rook here, I can just play knight d7. Knight d7's a real tidy move in this position. Place king g2.
Knight d5 kind of suggests itself. Yeah, let's go knight d5. Hit the bishop. Now this bishop's de defending this pawn. It's helping out. And I might get this activity I'm looking for. Like a bishop d2, definitely I could consider this. I might go bishop e1, but it's hard for him to play f3 after that. It's nice. Okay, so he's under two minutes. I'm about two minutes. This is crunch time. Hmm. Here I'm thinking about knight g4. Although he might just put the bishop back on c3, huh? Okay, let's just play rook here. Keep it simple. And if he takes, I'm going to take with the knight. I don't want to mess up my structure. This bishop could always drop back here, stabilize things. I'm thinking about this now. Got d7 guarded, which is nice. Thanks, Felix. Let's attack that as planned. Now maybe improve this bishop. I don't want his rook getting in. Yeah. I'm trying to stop that move. Just hope I'm not boxing in my rook too much here, but I think my, my bishop can always move, so it shouldn't be an issue. If e4, maybe knight g4. I can bring my king up next, too. He's prepping e4. Okay. I'm still going to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go here. Time, time. Not sure. Probably just going to play g4. It goes e4. Okay. Maneuver. It's time to do this. I need to be able to get my knight to c5. This king comes up. I'm definitely worried about those pawns, though.
I'm looking for knight c5. I just didn't want to allow rook d6. Hard to say. Hard to say, guys. Don't have much time, though. Let's advance. Maybe a chance here? Oh, he has that move. That's annoying. Not sure. <laughs> Oh, king e2. Bummer. Got a block. Hmm. Now nah, I'm losing, I think. Yeah, rook f7, something like that. Ooh, yeah, I'm going to resign this one. Mm. I thought I had something with knight d3, but I missed this rook d1 reply. Yeah, whereupon I think I'm in big trouble. That, that was tough to stop those pawns in time pressure. I guess I could take on b3 here, but it, it feels like these pawns are going. So I was really hoping I could swoop back and, and win one. But yeah, rook d1. I think I busted after rook d1. He's threatening king e2. There's not really anything to do. He actually could have played king e2 here, but probably made more sense what he did, push the pawn. Yeah, I lose 135 rating points for that one. That's, that's funny. Um, the heebie-jeeber... Subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys saw anything, but I I wasn't seeing how to punish knight takes d5. Maybe there is nothing. Maybe the way I played it is best. I was actually pretty happy with the position I got. I mean, this is one of these positions that's hard to assess. I would say normally white would be better here with the rook plus the two pawns. But there's an extra pair of rooks on board, and his queen side is a, a constant liability. So that's why I thought that I would have decent chances, but, you know, undoubtedly those pawns started advancing. Probably also around here I need something better, like maybe I have to start playing on the queen side more aggressively. Maybe g5 is a decent move here. And then try to uh, trade and then blockade with the king on f5. That might be a decent way to play it. Yeah. In hindsight, h5 wasn't too productive there. And king g2, though, I wonder why he played that, because that just seems like a useless backwards move. <laughs> you know, like he could have played for g4 right away. So I got optimistic for a second, especially with knight d3, but, yep, that fell apart. Could I play knight d3 here? And he always has e6. Okay, I'm going to rematch him. Uh, he said, nice defense with the knight jumps got really confused after knight c5. Um, that was an interesting game. Probably more interesting than the first one. First one, although I found it interesting, many of you guys probably didn't. The bishop versus knight end game. It's one to one. Yeah, we're halfway through the match, one to one. Any travel tips for Iceland? Uh, definitely do a tour of the South Coast. Sea Hag. The South Coast is beautiful. Do some hiking. Go to the Geothermal thermal River. I'll tell you about the spot I hiked to. It was awesome. I shot a vlog there. Got right in there. The, the famous shirtless vlog. 
Uh, he says, I think D takes C5 was better than Knight E5 after Rook takes F7. Ah, so at this moment. So he says this is better, he thinks. Yeah, that very well could be. Like maybe he takes, sorry, takes. This knight moves, that's what I was thinking, cover here. But I guess bishop f4. Yeah, and this rook is under attack. I don't know. Because the way the game turned out, again, it's, it's hard to assess. I'm not sure which side is better. I suspect the engine is going to say that white is slightly better out of all this with the material, the one extra point of material, but it's not easy against the bishop and the knight. Okay, um, I'm going to play d4 again. I like how that turned out in the previous game. Knight moves, subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you, knight moves. I'm going to do this again. John, what do you do to maintain a healthy social life while working for yourself? I don't think it's all that different. Man from Utrecht, I mean, you have to partition your, your work time. I'll play this again. You have to partition your work time and your personal time. I think that's the biggest piece of advice I have. Uh, just because you're self-employed doesn't mean you should be working all the time. So that was initially tough when I started out being self-employed. But as long as you maintain boundaries, you, you have quite a bit of freedom. More freedom than someone with a traditional 9 to 5, usually. Yeah, I agree, Anton. That would be pretty cool. Um, okay, he plays b6. b6 this time. All right, I'm going to put the bishop on d3 here. Put it on c4 in the last game because he played d6. And there's some reasons why I think c4 is better there. Um, kind of tempted to go for e4 here, even though I played e3 two moves ago. Wouldn't make much sense, but... If I castle h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, knight h5, might be some knight takes g5 business there. In fact, I think there is. Yeah, let's just castle. I think I'll play d6 or c5. We might end up getting a position very similar to the first game. John, ever thought about online poker to supplement income? I used to play a lot of online poker, but it got banned in the U.S. I know you can still play on some sites in certain states, but I don't really have any interest in getting back into it. But I used to play a lot of online poker. I definitely got caught up in that craze. I was like multi-tabling, 25 cent, 50 cent, playing an absurd number of tables at a time, like 20 tables or something ridiculous. I had poker tracker and all that. Four hundred thirty-one viewers. Thank you guys. I hope everyone's having a good Friday. So this is a match with GM Krikor, Mekatarian. He's rated twenty-five forty-five Fide. We're playing four games of fifteen plus two rapid. It's tied one-one right now. You can see the score right here. It's probably kind of small, especially if you're on a mobile device. But we're tied one-one. If it's tied two-two, then we go to a blitz tiebreaker. Is how we're going to decide things. I went to the University of Denver. That fat kid. Okay, d6. Yeah, let's stick to the usual. Go c5. Mm -hmm. Okay, try not to waste time on these moves. Like, set up very similar to the first game. The only difference might be that my bishop is here instead of c4, so that could be the only thing. What is the time here? It's 1.30 central.
So I wonder if he's debating on a completely different setup, but... You know, the knight should go to c6 or d7. He can think about h6 and g5. He might be considering that right now. But as I was describing, there's some tactics you have to work out there. So h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, and then knight h5. That's the whole point of chasing me with his kingside pawns. He wants to get the bishop pair. But he has to work out whether knight takes g5 is good for him or not. And I think that's still very dangerous for black. Because I can maybe play bishop h7 check first. But let's just say I take back with the f pawn. Um, I'm going to have queen h5 coming and it, it's trouble. Okay, he plays knight c6. Yeah, I'm going to play the old h3 move once again. I wonder if he'll give me a chance to play the Scandi in the next game. Will he play e4? As I said at the outset of the match, Krikor plays a lot of different openings, so I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I really didn't do any preparation for that reason. I just looked very briefly at his games in the database, and he plays a lot of stuff. So I was like, okay, let's just go into this in freestyle ourselves, have fun. Okay, queen there. Do I play bishop f4 sort of like I was doing in the other game? Or I could start with a3. Again, that a3 move is, is pretty helpful. Yeah, I'm going to do a3. I'm not going to overthink it. Let's just play it. He could go for e5 again if he wanted. It's a little different this time, the structure. Like my bishop is on g5 as opposed to h4. He hasn't played h6. Also, this bishop being back here could be helpful for me because maybe I can use this square for my knight. If you imagine he plays e5 and we trade and I play e4, which I would strongly consider doing, then maybe I can maneuver like that and try to use the d5 square eventually. Thanks, Nachik. Glad you approve. <laughs> yeah, Terminal, I could definitely see how this ex almost exactly the same setup would arise out of a London, just with the bishop on f4 instead of g5. I, mean, I was thinking about mixing up my opening choice, but I think this just fits my style, and I was up on time in the first game, so... I don't see a reason not to play this. Okay, he does go for this. So let's take. Now again, he has that same choice as he did in the first game. Take with the knight or the pawn. Deja vu. Wild Goose Chess donated $5. That's a great username. Hi, John. Learning a lot from your 1D4 repertoire on Chessable. Wanted to say thanks. Also, if you'd recommend anything on the site for a 1500 player. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of good repertoires there. Glad you're looking at that D4 repertoire. Uh, depends on your openings, like what you're playing. But 100 Endgames, you must know, I think is our strongest book on the site. Um, so along with Christoph's repertoires, Christoph has done an excellent job. So if you're looking for something other than an opening to study, then I would highly recommend the 100 Endgames, you must know. Takes to the pawn this time. All right, so he's switching it up. Now, I wonder if I should take his knight off on f6. That's paradoxical, but it's often a, a move you play here so as to remove a defender of the d5 square. So the plan would be bishop takes, bishop takes, e4, knight here, knight here, eventually try to work this in. I played that sort of thing before, and it's worked out pretty well. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to do that. It's funny, because in the first game, I was I was going a long ways to try to protect the bishop pair, specifically my dark square bishop, and here I just willingly give it away. Well, that's because of the difference in the, in the pawn structure. In that first game, I think I had good chances against the d6 pawn. That was a constant annoyance for him. Here, he took with that pawn, so there's no weakness on d6, but there is a weakness on d5 that I can try to exploit in... Getting rid of that knight is the first step to doing that. If I had kept this option open, 
So let his knight live on f6 and play e4 right away. Knight h5, I think, is always sort of annoying. Right here, if, if e4, knight h5 trying to work itself into f4, I think gives black counterplay. So let's see what he does against this plan. That fat kid cheered 1,000 bits. Says, hey, John, I've learned a lot from watching your videos. Thanks for your work and best of luck with your GM hunt. Thank you. Okay, so do I start my knight maneuver over there or do I begin with a move like rook d1? I think I like rook d1 first because I might even go through f1. Yeah, I might even go through f1, so let's let's do that. Going through f1 could be better, because if I go through c4, there's a chance he's going to play bishop a6 and try to kind of pin me up here. So maybe I should do that, and then my bishop at all times maintains uh, contact with the a6 square. Ninety-seven. Okay. Yeah, knight f one would be standard. The standard reply. Let's do it. Keep the time edge. Do you read, John? Yes, I do read. I am literate. <laughs> it's probably not what you meant, but yeah. I'm not like a huge, huge reader. Uh, one book I started reading is called The Shallows by Nicholas Carr. It was written maybe like six or seven years ago. But it's basically about how the internet is hijacking our brains. It's very interesting. I haven't got too far into it, but... I just think about that a lot, like how much time we spend on our phones and how it's changing the chemistry of our brain, the constant dopamine you get from like clicking on notifications, social media. So he's covering the d5 square quite well, but when my knight lands on e3, not only will he have to look at stuff on d5, but also knight g4 could be a threat in some cases. Coming here, trying to attack this bishop, attack this pawn. Uh, h6 square, maybe even. Possibly the only stumbling block I see here is my e4 pawn, because when I do land the knight on e3, my queen wouldn't be defending that pawn. So maybe he can he can try something like... Um, I don't know what exactly. He can't play c4 because I take with the knight, but it, it might be a thing I, ha I have to worry about. John, what was the idea behind a3? Uh, terminal, that was mainly so if I ever played e4 and there was a capture on d4, his knight would not be able to get to the b4 square. And also hinting at possibly playing b4. Although I admit I'm not sure if a3 is really the best way to play that position. Kaja, I'd recommend the coordinates trainer. Chess.com has one. Lee Chess has one. It gives you squares and you have to click on it. And if you do that, you'll, you'll quickly develop a feel for the squares, the coordinates. And as people are saying, you can also just play a lot more. Over time, you you get the feel down. Okay, I'm starting to build a significant time advantage. He's just going to double the rooks. Makes a lot of sense. I was considering bishop b5 here. Maybe bishop a6 even. Bishop a6 could be could be helpful. Because I would like to trade these bishops. That's again a strong minor piece for him. So if I trade the bishops, my bishop's not really doing much other than sometimes assisting in the defense here.
So I'm looking at bishop a6, bishop b5, or knight e3. Those are my main moves here. Could be interesting to play knight e3 with an eye towards playing c4 and knight d5, but I think I want to keep this pawn on c3 most of the time. Bishop b5, he's just going to take on d1 and then play rook d8. I don't know that I'm really getting anywhere with that. You can get some trades, but it doesn't really get at the core issue, which is the fact that um, I'd really like to trade his light square bishop. It just I burn a lot of time doing it though. Like bishop a6, if he doubles up. Yeah, there's just a lot of trades. I don't know if I eventually succeed in my goal. Hmm. Having a think here. Hmm, okay. I just noticed a possible tactical point that could be helpful for me. Bishop b5, rook takes d1, rook takes d1, rook d8, rook takes d8, queen takes d8, knight e3. With the idea that if he plays bishop takes e4, I have knight g4. I know that's a long line, but I like the way that looks. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for bishop b5. Pull the trigger. All right, I'm almost out of coffee. Fortunately, we're more than halfway through this match. <laughs> yeah, so as expected, he's got to cover the d7 square. So take, take, knight e3, bishop takes e4, I have knight g4, very important. And he can't keep the piece. <laughs> keep the piece. It's still nothing major, but it's that looks annoying for him. Okay. It would be better if these bishops were traded off, though, I admit. But in that other line, I didn't like all the time. I didn't like all the fact that I was burning several tempi. Here it feels more direct. My, my pieces are coming to their ideal squares. It's just I haven't got that trade in yet. I bet he's going to play this move. Or maybe h5. Because he doesn't want to deal with knight g4 with the attack on the bishop all the time. He needs to get rid of that threat. And I might have to drop back here if I want to defend. Or knight d2. But knight d2, I kind of want to keep a, uh, an eye on the g5 square. And also maintain the attack here. Yeah, he plays the bishop back. Okay, now bishop f7 is interesting in this position. Or sorry, bishop c4 looking at f7. Could definitely think about that. Probably just play h6 though. But then he can't play bishop h6, so that's, that's something. <clears throat> Again, I've got some pressure, guys. I like what's happening here. It's just this nagging pressure that uh, you like to have in a position like this. Okay. So if he takes here, at minimum I have bishop takes f7, but I can also look at knight g5. Knight g5 might work too. Double attack. So I think almost a guarantee he's going to play this move. If bishop h6 I can take here, his bishop won't defend that pawn. So I think that's almost forced. Yeah, but that, I got some ways to probe them. Like even h4, h5. I'll have to attend to this guy first, though. 
maybe queen here, looking for this. With a6, I can always play a4. Got to make use of your white games, especially in a match format. So he's trying to keep things together here. But let's let's hope I can increase the pressure. Again, I think h6 is, is darn near forced. I don't really see why he would play any other move. I can, I can see the hesitancy to play h6 because it makes his bishop more passive. He has to give up on the hope of bringing the bishop here, but this is such an annoying threat. He can he can think about knight c6 so the queen helps guard here. Or maybe, maybe knight c8 is a move, but I don't think he wants to give up control of d5. If he moves the knight away, I can plunk some piece on d5, probably my bishop. Yeah, nothing is protecting e4, but I went over that line. I can take on f7 and play knight g5 check, or maybe knight g5 right away. He's down to three minutes. So on h6, I want to have my move prepared. I think it's going to be queen c2. Try not to have a repeat of the first game where we both got in time pressure despite me having a lead on the clock the whole game. <laughs> it devolved into a time scramble. Try to avoid that this time. I'm looking to strike this game though for sure. I wonder if he's seeing something I don't see because I figured he would have played this by now. Like if he sees some problem with h6, but I mean f7 is really his only weakness. E5 is kind of weak too, but like if knight g4, he can he can cover it. Queen d6. So my guess is he just really doesn't want to play this move. He plays knight c8. All right. Hmm. Okay. So that knight is bound for d6 a lot of the times here. He's still not threatening to take on e4, so that's important to note. But knight d6 is somewhat of a threat. I think on bishop d5, he's going to play bishop takes d5, knight takes d5, knight e7, and just look to swap. I could play c4 there. Or continue trading down and try to win in the end game with his d5 weakness. That that might also be compelling. Yeah, that's probably what I would do. Okay, let's play bishop d5. And see if he tries to attack this, or he's going to play around it. Okay. Yeah, maybe banking on this being weak in a lot of cases. If I play knight d2, then he can go here. But I feel like this idea, trying to trade off knights, is pretty strong. He may not want to allow that. Maybe first a4. But knight d2 immediately is more appealing. 
Yeah, I think knight e2 immediately is better. Okay. wonder if queen d7 is an option. So if knight here, queen here. But on queen d7, he can't play bishop h6 any longer. Because I got the fork. So trying to get a good minor piece versus bad minor piece situation. Like good knight versus bad bishop. Pure strategic play at the moment, guys. <laughs> All right, he's going to force the issue. So what's the idea? He wants to get his queen down to c1 at the end? Is that the plan? Could be the plan. Knight c4, take, take, queen g5, maybe. Hmm. I think my queen and knight, though, make a good attacking combination, but the check is kind of coming quickly, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to go knight c4. I'm expecting this. Oh, he brings the bishop behind. That I wasn't expecting so much. Not that it's bad necessarily, but it seems seems like the queen coming in would have uh, led to better coordination for him. So here, looking at b4, and if bishop takes maybe queen a6, What else? I mean, I could just defend my pawn with, like, queen e2, something along those lines. Oh, there's also queen a6 right away. Maybe queen a6 immediately is better. Queen a6 immediately. And he has some trouble defending, doesn't he? He could also play queen b5. Hmm. Decisions here. Okay, time. Keep track of time, John. <laughs> kind of like queen a6 immediately, honestly. I'm going to do that. Attack weakness. If he takes here, I take on a7. b6 is weak, and these are guarded. That's my whole idea here. Still got the strong knight. I mean, I got to keep in mind he might undermine it with f5, but that would be... A big risk for his king's safety. And watch for me trying to coordinate this knight and, knight and queen later, uh, especially around his king if possible. He takes, okay. This feels like it should be tough for him. Bishop's pretty far away from home. Okay, now I can think about a couple different things. Taking on b6 with the queen. Or just a4 first. a4 first looks strong. I mean, why rush, right? Yeah. Queen g5, I guess. Hmm. Some of these end games start to look really good. I mean, I think I can straight win a pawn right now if I want, but I'm just worried that leads to a drawish end game. Hmm. 
Hmm. Yeah, let's play a4. If I took on b6 right away, I didn't like that he could take this pawn. I have knight c4, bishop here. But if I take, he has bishop b2 at the end, and I actually... I can play knight d7, it's 3 versus 4, knight versus bishop. I think this is better when he has such little time. Queen h4. Can his king survive there? Take, he takes on e4. Well, we'll find out. I gotta play this. He's gonna take here now. So, my A pawn is pretty compelling in the end game. I could just take on B2. Queen F6 is, you know, a good looking move, but King H6, do I really have anything there? Maybe not. Ninety seven. I don't know. I think just getting behind the pawn is good here. After the go we go into the queen end game. I can also take on c five. I didn't even realize that. But then he takes on a4. Man, I don't know. I'm going to go for the queen endgame. Okay. Get behind the pawn. I'm going to try to push here. Push the pawn next. I don't want him to check on d1 and then play queen here. So guard the back rank. Get ready to roll. Queen endgames are tough to hold. I'm going to do this next. This feels like it's got to be winning. Start bringing my king up now. Make a move, John. <laughs> I guess queen h6. Not quite sure what to do here. I'm just going to try to burn some time. Okay, I'm going to go for this. Ah, I can do that now. Mm. Yeah, this is going to be a draw. Yeah, mm. didn't figure out a good way to press that. Hmm. He set up a nice wall here with his pawns. I know I must have missed a better way to play that for a win. Playing h4 is not good. Maybe I got to try to sneak around with my king, but that gets dangerous if he ever trades and runs the c-pawn. Ooh. Boy, I, I was close to winning that, guys. Oh. <laughs> okay, so this moment was critical here. I feel like I'm much better here. 
And a4 seems correct. So I was mentioning queen takes b6. Hitting his bishop, so he's got a trade. And now he can take either pawn, but I think he should definitely take the a pawn. Because if he takes the c pawn, I go here. And I think my a pawn just runs. Yeah. So he takes here. I saw this line. Knight c4, bishop c1. Take here. And I can get an endgame with an extra pawn, but I don't think this is winning. 4 versus 3. This structure is perfect. Should be a draw. So that's why I played a4, trying to take on b6 on the next move. Might be something with queen check here. Queen check. Uh, I think he probably plays king h6 here. Like his king is definitely awkward. But my knight is now undefended. These pawns are loose. Like this is this is a double edge continuation. There's no follow up checks for me. I didn't see anything here. I mean, I thought maybe knight e7. Uh, I guess I am threatening that. Actually, that might be good. <laughs> that just might be really strong. Maybe queen a8, though? I don't know. Yeah, and this queen endgame, I think I handled it pretty well. Queen a1 makes a lot of sense. Just get the queen behind the pawn, push it. c4 followed by queen b5. Yeah, and he'd be busted here if his king wasn't so close. His king is just in time, so if I play queen b7 here and try to force the queen trade, he's taking, taking, playing king c7. He's just getting in the square. I think my best winning chance is somehow to go raid his pawns with my queen, but I, I didn't figure out a good way to do that in a game with such little time. Might have to keep some route open for the king. I did miss that he has uh, queen d6 at the very end. I thought I was going to maybe pick up a pawn or two and give him some trouble, but yeah, queen d6 pretty much kills the game right away. Yeah, this is just a draw now. Queen a3 instead of queen a4. Says weedy pie. Uh, one second. Uh, I'm trying to find that moment. I was just chatting with Krikor. Queen a3? Yeah, I could play queen a3, you right. And go after this pawn. But he plays c4, right? He can do that. I actually thought he would do that in the game. On queen a4, I thought he would do this. Although then... Oh, okay, I guess the problem is I go here now. Ah, so maybe maybe that's your, your contention here. So if this, here, then this. I see. Yeah, and now his king is not close enough. He's one one square away. Sven says, I think queen f6 is winning. Very well could be with knight g8. But yes, I agree with you, chat. I think uh, queen a3 was the move. I was focused on trying to offer a trade on b5 by pushing c4. But yeah, this is, this is much better. Because he simply can't defend that pawn. Uh, the only thing you can do is push it, but yeah, then this comes in and my pawn's just running. We're just discussing the game right now. Um, okay. Last game coming up. I'm going to go get some water real quick, guys. I'll be right back. Match tied. One and a half, one and a half. Okay.
All right. Yeah, Krikor said he was showing his chat the same thing with the queen b4, queen b6 idea in the queen endgame. Yep. Okay, I'll rematch him. And just a reminder, if this game is tied and the match is tied 2-2, we're going to play a blitz tiebreaker. I think we're just going to play first to win a game. <laughs> but first, let's play this last game because anything could happen. <laughs> you guys want to see a blitz tiebreaker? I believe in this one I should have played faster, like deciding on a4. I, I took way too long to play that move, and it was a pretty obvious move. Okay, he's going to play knight f3. Now, let me figure out if I want to repeat that same setup or not. Let's play something different. Mix it up. We can't have just all repetitions of the same openings, right? <laughs> Hard to play the Icelandic Gambit against knight f3 on move one. Man from Utrecht. I'm um, just debating what to do here. Let's go g6. I like to play these setups recently. Creaker's taking all of my rapid rating. Greedy Grandmaster. Knight f3 is a pretty flexible move, yeah. Okay, so now we're in a Pierce type position. Mm, yeah, I'll play c6. See what setup he adopts here. Plays a4. Okay. I've had some tournament experience with this recently. Develop. <laughs> right. Perk. I play knight f3 on move one myself from time to time. I think it's a move best used if you already have d4 experience for white because you can often transition into d4 openings favorably. And just in general, you have to know like the ins and outs of how the moves transpose, or how the lines transpose into one another. Because knight f3 pairs well with a d-pawn push. So. Thanks, Skepta. Yeah, he's playing a pretty modest line, bishop e2. Okay, castle. He'll castle too. And I think I'll play queen c7. Usually the plan is queen c7 followed by e5. If I played knight bd7 first, there's always a chance he might play e5 followed by e6. So I kind of like playing queen c7 first. Yeah, and here I can play e5 or knight bd7, but I think e5. Let's do it. So we're going to have, I think, a game similar to all these games have been going. Slow build up, uh, possibly coming right down to the wire. You never know. It's a little early to say, but... Okay. Now, I recall in this opening, I can try to play b6 if I want, but I think just knight bd7 as normal is best. And at some moment, black may take on d4, specifically the rook on e8. He takes, okay. Yeah, take with the pawn. Bishop c4. 
I feel like I played something almost identical to this recently. That's a good move because this bishop is much better on this diagonal. And if rook e8, knight g5 is always annoying. I can play a5, b6, go from there. That would be normal. I'd like to challenge this bishop, but it's not simple to do that. Knight h5 definitely comes to mind too. Knight h5, knight f4. I think I might play knight h5 actually, because if g3, I have knight b6 and his bishop here on c4 and his pawn on h3 will be under attack. Yeah, knight h5, the more I look at it, is probably just the most accurate way to play this. Let's do it. Otherwise, I agree with Mannered Monkey. I'm a little cramped here. So I need to play for some activity. Try to demonstrate that some of the squares I have are annoying for him to cover. And I know I probably missed some of the subscriptions or donations, or maybe not. <laughs> Alpharis did host me with five viewers. Thank you, Alphers. You guys like this format? What do you think of the Rapid Games? I've never done a, a match like this with Rapid Games, dual commentary. I like it. I think it's a nice change of pace, personally. A lot more time to talk about the position. Still get in time pressure, but <laughs> it's fun to discuss. I mean, I guess I did play a couple of rapid games against Danny one time in a chess rivals, but that's about it. You guys know Danny. I mean, not a serious match, right? <laughs> cool. That's good to hear. Diagonal Lady, Zion Canyon, Long Grieve. Yeah, it's easier to follow the action. I can actually keep up with the chat. Uh, not sure, Terminal. <laughs> yeah, thanks again, Elfers. So I'm going to play knight h5 on the next move if he lets me. And again, g3 doesn't work tactically for him because of knight b6. He'd have to play bishop takes b6 then to avoid losing a pawn, and he doesn't want to do that. Oh, in general, I mean, I guess the longest I've streamed recently is maybe like three and a half hours or something. Uh, I don't know that I'll ever do a 24-hour stream or something crazy like that. I don't want to say I won't ever do it, but I would need some people to help out, kind of like the chess bras do. It's a big advantage having a team for content producing because obviously you can take breaks and you don't always have to be there. People can fill in for you. So again, I've got Krikor thinking in the middle game a little bit. I mean, allowing knight f4 is not the end of the world for him. He could just let me play that move. But I guess he has trouble putting his queen on a decent square. He plays a5, so he's going to kind of go for a cramping idea. Yeah, he's probably trying to rule out knight b6. Yeah, because I was going to say knight b6 followed by rook d8 would be a good idea against a move like queen d2. So still thinking about knight f4. I'm also thinking about knight f6 or may maybe rook d8, but knight g5 is still a concern. So let's say knight h5, he'll probably play queen d2. It's 
a little annoying because I can't get my rook to d8 and do a discovery so easily. So maybe I should play this move to start. Then I don't know about my my minor pieces there. A5 is a good move, I think. If I'm reading this correctly. Uh, maybe on knight h5 I can do knight f6 and then uh, try to use the e6 square and the fact that my knight is now defending that. It's not a slam dunk though. Knight h5, queen d2, knight f6, rook d1, rook fd1 I suppose. Maybe rook e8 there. No, I think that's all right. I'm going to go for that. He does play queen d2. Because now this rook does have to watch this pawn, so he's going to have to use the other rook. If I play knight f6, is there any concern about taking and then pushing here? And have knight h5 then, but could be a little shaky. Hmm, maybe acceptable. I still got to watch knight g5 too, though. I can't forget about that move. Okay, I'm just taking a little time here. Thing is, I don't see too many other moves other than knight f6. And then I want to figure out what to do with rook d1. But again, I should take my advice from earlier. And if I don't see an alternative, just play the move I've intended all along. Could try b5 here. I mean, b5 is interesting. b5 takes, takes with the knight. Maybe that's actually a pretty legitimate way to play because then I'm hitting the bishop and my rook can quickly come over to d1 but what if b5 he just plays bishop b3 or something have I weakened myself mm, knight f6 and I'll have b4 threats I mean, b5 works tactically, so it's pretty tempting to do it. Let's play it. See what happens. I'm, I kind of want to get out of this bind. I'm curious how he's going to react, whether he's going to take en passant or play bishop b3. I predict he takes en passant. Actually, no. I think he's going to play bishop b3. Changed my mind. <laughs> he, uh, I, should, I should have stuck with en passant. Okay. <laughs> so I've got some weak pawns over here, but I get some activity, and I think I'm going to succeed in solving some of my issues here development-wise. Because he, he loses some time now having to deal with the bishop. So let's say the bishop drops back somewhere. One of these squares I can play rook d8, maybe follow with bishop e6. Uh, bishop a6 in some cases, or a5 and bishop a6. I mean, yes, strategically there's definitely some some concerns here, but I hope that the, uh, the development is worth it. So now rook d8 would be pretty consistent, and he's going to have to move his queen to an undesirable square. Oh, wow. No, never mind. Okay, I thought rook d8, he might have rook takes a7 for a second. I was almost hallucinating. Yeah, there's no tactics. Okay, let's do this. Probably going to queen c1 and rook d1. I'd love to land that. That would be great. 
<laughs> but that's that's not going to happen anytime soon. Maybe C5 now? C5, C4? Straightforward plan. Is that too greedy? The fact that he always has to keep an eye on E2 is sort of making me want to go for something more active. I think 96 is the same move here. 96 and try to land something on D4. But then he gets to trade some pieces off, like uh, bishop h6, maybe. Got to watch my time, too. It feels like I should, in theory, keep this pawn here. But again, I'm tempted by the, the dynamic potential. I don't think any sacrifices around his king are working yet. Okay, bombs away. Let's do this. I'm definitely leery of giving up these squares. But if his knight has to stay there then so be it. And I'm, I'm willing to allow this. I think that would be a great trade for me. Open the dark square bishop. I mean, he can try to liquidate several pieces like take, take, knight d5, take, bishop takes, bishop b7. But I feel like after all those trades, um, in the end, my bishop should have good scope. Maybe he can play c4 there at the end, but we'll see. Hard to know what to do with these pawns, whether to keep them there. They're kind of weaknesses wherever I put them. So at least I can try to put this C pawn to work, is my thought. One strategy that I think is excellent when you're drifting towards time pressure, you're not quite there, but you've used you know two-thirds of your time, three-quarters of your time, Start moving fast when you have like five to 10 minutes left. 10 minutes if it's like an over the board game. But I've seen some players say that they they try to engage themselves and play like it's a time scramble when they have five minutes. Not making reckless moves, but just like being very intentioned and um, trying not to dip below uh, the threshold where you know it's going to be just a crazy time scramble. Thinking about that line I mentioned again, so bishop takes f4, e takes f4, knight d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5. Maybe I'm better off playing rook b8 to try to attack b2, try to force him to play c3, and maybe then... I, mean, I still need to trade his, lights, his light square bishop, though. Bishop e6 or something. Hmm. Taking on f4 might be decent. Like, if he's purely playing for, a, I don't know, some sort of strategic... Small advantage, that's the way to go, I think. Match coming down to the wire, guys. It's totally up for grabs here. Tied one and a half, one and a half. We both won a game. There was one draw. For the glory. There's no prize at stake here other than pride, uh, the cheering of the Twitch crowd, the endless adoration of you guys. I like that he's using time.
Thanks, Hybrid Dreamer. <laughs> For honor, yes, that's right, Chess Bay. <laughs> that's right. Still looking at Bishop takes f4. But now I'm thinking... Nah, that's maybe too crazy. I was thinking Bishop takes, Pawn takes, Knight d5. Maybe try not taking the Knight, but I, I don't think I can get away with uh, avoiding the capture. I probably have to take. Yeah, that position will get messy at least, and I hope that my Bishop will have enough play down this to compensate for the doubled f pawns. Yep, definitely five card draw. There are players like that. Plays rook d1. Okay. So, I mean, c4 would be consistent with my play here. But does it just lose a pawn? Now that his rook is on d1. Or maybe I take on d1 first, he takes with the queen, and then I play c4. <clears throat> that might be the better way to go, huh? And I can try to put my bishop somewhere active like b7 after that. I think rook d4 is a little too crazy in this position. You can like take on f4 and then take on d4. I could trade on d1. He takes with the queen and then play knight e6 looking for knight d4, but he gets d5 with his knight. I don't think I want to allow that. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So if I play c4 right away here, <clears throat> how does that work out tactically? quite interesting c4 rook takes d8 queen takes d8 bishop takes b6 queen takes b6 bishop takes uh c4 i was almost thinking bishop takes a3 h3 works there but he has stuff like rook a6 it's kind of deep in that line but and again i, I gotta make sure knight g5 is something i consider torn here guys i'm torn i don't want to take on d1 but it might just be the, the best move take he takes with the queen c4 i'm looking at stuff like knight b5 like weird stuff where he can try to uh take on a7 in some cases i think queen d7 is working though in that case I still have problems, even if I play C, uh, rook takes d1 first. Like, bishop takes b6 is always annoying. And I don't know where to put my light square bishop. Like, maybe d7 in this position? Alright. Time to make a decision soon here. I'm going to go for this one. Let's go. I'm going to sack the pawn. There's some potentially fun stuff. And I want to take the initiative with both of us. 
having little time. But that was a three minute and 45 second move. So time to focus. does take got to take here and now he's going to take there and here I was seeing some interesting stuff like bishop here for instance uh maybe maybe rook b8 first bishop takes h3 would be really nice but I think rook a6 is is the antidote there There's also even queen here. Actually, if I take on h3, how is that really working for him? I take on h3 he has knight g5 perhaps but I can come back to ace e6 or even play bishop h6 I mean I don't know okay I gotta decide quick here there's a lot of options in this position I don't think the capture on h3 is good. Hmm. I'm going to go here. I don't know. But I don't have much time. He might just stabilize things with b3, but at least then his knight is undefended. Bishop h6 was tempting too, but I think queen b1, I wasn't seeing a whole lot as, as far as follow-ups there. Or even queen f1, something like that. Queen b4 I didn't like so much because of bishop f1, and he's covering e2. So the capture on c3 is not a threat. Definitely fearing I'm not going to have enough compensation here, but we'll, we'll find out. Maybe queen f6 on the last move would have been decent. So that my rook stays defending this, but no time to think about it. Hmm. He wants my bishop at the end of the line. take guard this kind 
kind of just down a pond now, though. Probably just B3. Yeah. I don't know. That move doesn't particularly help me, but <clears throat> I'm trying to free my queen up. Maybe I can play bishop f8 next. Bishop f8, king g7. Trying to reorganize. Bishop c4, perhaps. I, I, I queen here. Yep. Knight takes e5, could hurt. I'm going to try to trade, but uh, I'm down a couple pawns now. Maybe I can escape. Uh, probably not. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Take, take, take f7, king g7. I think he can even take on g6. Maybe. Yeah, I think he can. Mm-hmm. He sees it. He has knight c4. So this should definitely be like a technically lost endgame. I'm down, what, three pawns? Do you guys believe in miracles? <laughs> I don't know, I'm just trying to restrict him here. Well, you can take this guy too. This is just hanging. Better guard that. Okay, I'm posing him like some technical problems here, but he's not not really risking much. Didn't know where to go with my king there. Can bring his king up now. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I lost on time, but 
I think the position was losing at this point. Knight f5 coming. Oh, uh, yeah. That's right. Not much to do there, Steli. That was well-deserved. I was going down. So, good game by Mr. Krikor Mekatarian. Yeah, he navigated that well. Uh, I think probably the c5 idea is too ambitious. But I also think I'm, I'm just worse here. Slightly. Because of the structural problems. It's hard for me to pinpoint the weaknesses in White's position. But I think the structural problems ensure that I'm, I'm just worse. Yeah, Terminal plays these structures. Says C, C6 is usually bad. Or you mean C5. Did never quite get compensation here. I mean, this position is probably critical, but I, I just didn't see my direct tries amounting to much. You know, bishop takes h3 is appealing. With the idea of take and take, and then I'm on this and this. <clears throat> Here, I'm not even sure if he can maybe just do this. Uh, let's say queen, queen here, queen f1, attacking this and this. It looks dicey for me. Maybe I have some counterplay. But I, th I thought I saw another problem with bishop takes h3 as well. I was seeing stuff like this. Or even knight g5. <clears throat> I wasn't sure. Or knight d5 was another move to consider. So there, there are issues with that. And I think if I don't have something direct here, I'm, I'm just worse. Here, if I take... I didn't like... What did I not like? I think simply this. Take and he's on f7. Knight g5 is possible too. Maybe I just have to defend a pawn down endgame eventually. He did find a nice continuation at the end uh, in mutual time pressure, so I give him credit for that, like right here. Because if I can escape just being down one pawn or maybe two pawns, like two pawns is still pushing it, but you know I have much better drawing chances down two pawns versus three pawns. But he saw this nuance that after bishop takes f7, king g7 take, despite his knight being kind of shaky and being the lone defender of the bishop, I can't effectively attack his knight uh, in a way where I don't also put one of my pieces on pre. If king f6, this check is winning. Go pick up the bishop. I'm not trapping his knight or anything. He's always escaping. And if bishop d6 as played, you guys saw what happens. Bishop d6, he has this nice move, knight c4. And I saw that coming, but... When he was attacking f7, he played queen d7. I just didn't see any decent alternative to doing this. Um, yeah, f7 is collapsing here. I think I'm just busted. Did you consider arranging f5? Asks Uday. Didn't see a good opportunity to do that, no. That's hard to get in in this, in this particular line. Yeah, and I don't think I have anything here. This is just a slow conversion of his advantage. He played it well. Kept everything protected. Uh, so let me tell him good match. Yeah, I felt like every game was close. Definitely my best game was the first one. You know, no, go figure, I won that game. Um, Should have won the last game. If I'd won the last game, I would have at least tied the match in regulation 2-2, but... Hey, those those end games can be difficult sometimes. So I wish I would have seen that queen a3 nuance, but again, it was mutual time pressure. And um, he he outplayed me in this game. He played a very nice game in this one. Score was two and a half, one and a half, in favor of Grandmaster Krikor Mekatarian. We'll have to do this again because this was fun. I want to see more rapid dual commentaries. I think it was a good idea. Yeah, I think I acquitted myself well. I'm giving up a little bit of rating in these matches, but um, I feel like we're competing on nearly equal terms. Definitely give him the nod as the higher rated player, but I've got chances. Yeah, you look back at a match and you always think, okay, what could have what could have gone differently if such and such happened? But as I was saying, like in a, a match format, you really have to make use of your chances with white, I've found. So yeah, I wish I would have pulled out two wins with white. So thanks everyone for coming 
And thanks to Grandmaster Krikor for arranging the match. You guys should check out his Twitch and his YouTube page. He usually streams in Portuguese, but he occasionally does English streams, which I think this one was. And maybe I'll hit him up for a rematch sometime because this was really good. Maybe we could even make it a regular thing. I don't know. I'll talk to him and see what his schedule is like. So, yep. Have a good weekend, everyone. I agree, Steli. I'll put this up on YouTube if you happen to come in late. Uh, also, my, my broadcasts are uh, archived immediately on Twitch. I don't know how long they remain archived, but I'll put it up on YouTube soon. Uh, definitely within the day. And you guys can watch it again if you want. So thanks again, everyone. I'm going to log off now. Enjoy the weekend, and I'll be back again soon. All right. Bye, guys. Oh, before we leave, do I still have it? Let's uh, let's send you guys out with a nice little bit of, of nightmare fuel, courtesy of Anton Squared Me. You know, didn't didn't quite get there. I've got some growing to do, but what do you guys think? Like, leave a comment. Do you, do you think I should go for this look? The maybe he's born with it look? What do you guys think? I'd, I'd be curious about your opinion. So. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, guys. I'm going to wrap this up. I'll see y'all later. Bye.